Hello everyone, and uh, this, let's start on module number two, and we have a new project and a new problem. And the problem for this project is a color palette. So the, the, the initial statement of the problem is how we can develop an app that gives the user the opportunity to create a color. So if we follow our process and we have three steps, step number one is problem formulation. Step number two is solution formulation, and step number three is solution implementation. In the problem formulation, we try to discover what exactly is the problem, or in other words, what's the scope of the app that we are going to create. The initial problem statement usually is vague. Um, it's either given to you by somebody or you think of it. In this case, we want to allow make an app for the user to create a color. Uh, there are many different ways to create a digital color and uh, if you think about uh, real life you can create a color by bringing uh, original colors and mix them together and you make whatever color you want. In um, the digital world it's the same you can bring in the um, original color the red green and blue and you can mix them together to a certain degree to create a color. So we can, after reviewing a little bit what, how colors are treated digitally, uh, we can define the scope of our, our app is to uh, allow the user to mix red, green, blue, and alpha to create a color. We will have to demonstrate that color and we want to add something to this um, uh, app is to use that color in something. So we'll say that after we mix a color, use the color to paint or draw. Um, you can do it in the same view or another view. Here I'm going to put another challenge on another view. You might be overwhelmed coming from module number one into this and I want to tell you you don't need to be overwhelmed. We are thinking loud here on what kind of problem we wanted to solve and how we can uh, envision the app. How exactly are we going to accomplish this? This doesn't happen in this step of the process, problem formulation. This happens later on. So I want you to try to resist the temptation resist the temptation to rush through the process or to move faster than the process. Yield to the process to lead you towards creating the app. And that will allow you to envision some complex features and step by step uh, through the approach of breaking the big problem into smaller problem, you will be surprised of how uh, able you are with the resources available to accomplish the task. So here we are working through the three step steps process, problem formulation, solution formulation, solution implementation, and they will talk in here about the, uh, the, the original problem, which is if you think of uh, what we did in module number one, that's iteration one. Uh, defining the problem. So here the scope is two things. Allow the user to mix red, green, blue, and alpha to create a color and use that new color to paint or draw on another view. So let's talk about the solution formulation. In the solution formulation, we think through three main areas. Following the model view controller, or MVC design pattern. So we divide the solution into three areas. A model which des describes the data, a view which describes what the user will see and how the user will interact with it, and a controller which describes the brain or the intelligence of the app which determines how exactly the app is going to do, uh, how it is going to connect the model and the view. So let's take them one by one. So model. What is the model you have here? Now I want, before we get into this, I want you to answer this as much as you can. 
Um, you will not know everything at this stage. You answer whatever you can, and what you don't know, leave it and move on. Continue on the process, and then you will discover it in later iteration. So here, the model describes the two things. What data the app needs, and how to represent this data. So what data the app needs, let's go back to the problem statement. And in the problem statement, look for data, information. So we see here that the user is going to mix red, so that's data. Uh, when you think about making a color in, in real life, you get a, a red tube and you start mixing, you have to know how much are you going to put of red. So that's data, the amount of red. Green, the same thing. Blue, the same thing. Alpha, the same thing as well. Then you're going to mix all those four and you're going to make something. What is what you're going to make? A color. So that's also a data. So we have five different types of data and we're going to use this to paint. Paint is a verb, so it's not data. So it doesn't come here. Verbs, usually we're going to see them in the controller. Models is where we're going to see the data. So we're going to use the same color and we're going to use it in another view. So you can think of a view also as data because we're going to color that view or use it too. So what the data the app is going to need, there are uh, five of them. So the app needs the following data. Uh, it needs red value or red amount, green value or green amount, blue value or amount, and the alpha value or and the color. The second question that we have is how to represent this data in the app. This means what kind of library capable of representing this data. The data is represented by libraries. We call them types. So this will be the data and here the type. So the red value, what kind of value is this red? Looking into and maybe you can research a little bit about digital color. Um, the in digital life you the value of the red comes from between 0 and 1 so it's a decimal number that represent the degree of red in a color between 0 and 1 so it could be 0 0.1 0 0.2 0 0.3 our point here is that it's a decimal number a decimal number uh, is not integer the library type that represents a decimal number is called float. So we have a library type called the float for the red value. Green, blue, alpha are the same. So if we're going to use the library type float to represent the red value, I'm going to use it also to represent the green value. I'm going to use it to represent the blue value. I'm going to use it to represent the alpha value. And then we come to the color. What is the library that represents a color? And there is a library called UI color. Um, for now, you are new, so you you will learn you are learning about these types for the very first time, which is okay. I don't want you to panic and say I will never figure this out on my own. Yes, you won't in the beginning. Although, if you actually try it and go do a Google search or search on the developer that Apple.com and say how to represent a decimal number. In iOS, you will be able to find the link that will tell you float. But in the beginning, as I mentioned before, I will be sharing this information with you. You will find it in a textbook or you will find it on resources. As you go through the project, you will build your own knowledge with the library. It might be a good idea at this time to go spend some time learning about what is the float library, what is the UI color. You do that by going to developer.apple.com and look at the API documentation. So this is the data and how are we going to represent the data in our app. The second uh, part of this is the view. So the view represent what the user will see and interact with. Because the view from everything in your app, the model and the controller, the user sees the view. 
the user interact with the view. So the view is the interface between you and the user. And so far for module one, we had an app with one view. If you open your phone, you're likely to have more than one view. So what should be on the view? Here, we need to read something from the user. So the user need to give, the, to give us some input. And what is the input? The user need to give us a red value, a green value, a blue value, an alpha value. Then the app is going to mix them and give the user a color. So we need to find a component that will allow the user to give us a decimal number. There are multiple ways that we can let the user give us a decimal number. A text field, like when the user uh, enter the data, the number themselves, and there is another one called slider. So we'll use a component called UI slider. And the UI slider is a component that allow the user to select a value between limits. It's the slider you probably used it in some apps before. Why am I using this? Number one, it is fun. Number two, I have a situation here where I know the minimum limit for the data and the maximum limit for the data. If the user give me 10, if I let the user enter a number and they enter 10 or they enter 15 or something, that's not a valid number. So in situations where you want the user to give you a number between certain limits, the slider is better because you don't want to keep checking if the user gives you the right number or not. So in the view, what the user will see and interact with, so the user will interact with the UI slider to provide value for which one of them. I have four values that I need. Then I need four sliders. So I need to make four of those in order to provide red value, green value, blue value, and alpha value. Then I need another view, another way to display that color. So the app is going to mix the color in the controller and gives the user a color. I have to show that color to the user. So how would I show that? There might be many ways. One way we're going to do here is to color a view so that the user can see that color. So we will need a view to demonstrate or to display the color. Uh, we're going to need another one to paint because we're going to do some painting so we will need another screen to paint and will uh, to paint to a screen or another view to paint. Now we move to the controller and notice that I am moving very quickly. I'm, I'm really jotting down some ideas. That's all what you're doing here. You're taking what's in your menu, you're thinking loudly, but you're thinking loudly in an organized way. So what does the controller need to do? The controller need to construct, so the controller, what the app uh, should do and when. When is a very important question. This, uh, because nothing happens in this environment except as a result of event. We call this event-driven. Event-driven, something has to happen to trigger everything. So what the app need to do, the app need to mix, uh, it needs first to read the values that the user entered It need to use the values to mix a color. And it needs to display the color. Then it needs to uh, move to a new view. And it needs to use the color to paint. That's everything we need to do for our app. When should we do this? The question of when we can say, when should the app display the color? When the user gives a value. So the app displays a color when the user provides a value. When the user selects a value. And when should the app display a new view? When the user tells it to do so. Uh, so display a view uh, when the user instructs. 
So we need uh, to adjust the, the, the model view control, we need to adjust the view so that when the user instructs the app to display a view, the app will display a view. And when should the app uh, paint? When the user moves their finger on the screen. Uh, paint when the user touch the screen. These are all choices that I am making. You may make different choices if you want. The last step is the solution implementation. And this solution implementation, this is planning. What ex how exactly I'm going to accomplish the building of that solution. And we divide this into iteration. So we say iteration number one. And this is what we're doing right now. That's planning. Then you have iteration number two. In each iteration, divide the scope that you defined into smaller scopes. So the scope that we created divided into smaller pieces. We want the user to mix four colors to create a new one. And we want to use it to paint the view. So that's the first division. We divide this into two. Actually, use the color to paint in another view. That's another split. We make another view first, then paint. That's the third. And to use the user to mix four, that's another split. We can start with one and then add the other, then add the other. We're not going to really need to do four of them, but probably we can split this into three. Is there a right wrong here? No, there isn't. Um, what I advise you to do is divide into the smallest iteration, the smallest scope that you can, that, that still remains meaningful, that you still can see something at the end and, and test it and make sure that you are on the right track. So I'm going to go with iteration number two here is that uh, let the user um, mix a color from red only. From red only. With all other colors zero. So that's iteration two. Iteration three, add green. Iteration four, add blue and alpha. Then iteration five, um, you can say I'm going to do some enhancements or you can add the enhancement there. Iteration five is uh, navigate to a new view. Or, uh, yeah, and iteration six is uh, move the color to the new view, and iteration seven is um, use the color to paint in the new view. Again, this is designed, so each one of us will think about it differently. Uh, you may dis design this or orient it differently, but I don't want you to put a lot of things together because when you put a lot of tasks together, you become overwhelmed. And as a beginner, you want to make things easy for you, not difficult. So breaking it down into smaller pieces is very important. So let's go ahead. We finished iteration number one. Let's go ahead and do iteration number two, doing the blue color. Uh, create a color from red and um, and to create a color from it we follow the steps again problem formulation and in the problem formulation we define the scope what's our scope the user enters a value for red and uh, reviews the resulting color and the red value is between 0 and 1 because we learned from the previous iteration that that's the value for red in digital colors uh, the solution formulation is divided into three uh, components the model what data and how to represent it so the data we have here is red uh, value, a decimal value, and a color. So to for the decimal value, we're going to use the float type. 
and uh, for the uh, color we're going to use the UI color value the user is going to use a UI slider in the view we learned that from the previous iteration and you'll see it in the view so that's also going to be uh, a data model we're representing the component on the view so it is not really um, a model as a result of the problem it is a model as a result of the view so because we need to put a component on the view for the user to give us the data that component becomes also a model because we have to retain that component in memory and read from that component and retrieve from the component what the user has entered uh, you may not discover this at this point once you get to the view the next step you will see it so you can go back and add it the view is the next step and we said we're gonna use a UI slider to select a number and we're gonna use a UI view to display the color if I'm going to use a UI view to display the color do I need to model it you're right the same thing I did with the UI slider I remembered the UI slider when I was in the model and I forgot we're also gonna need a UI view as a model because we're going to change the color so that's another model that I have to use in order to display to the user the color that was created. Finally, the controller describes the steps I need to do. So the app needs to uh, provide the user or, or read the uh, value that the user selected. Use the value to create a color and use the color to set the background of the view how exactly are we going to do each and every one of those how are we going to retrieve the value from the that the user selected how are we going to use the value uh, to create a UI color? How are we going to set those, all of those? Once you reach the point how, you ask, is there a library? And a library method that can do this for me. And once we open Xcode, we can read and learn about the UI color library, read and learn about the UI view library, and the UI slider to see what kind of functions in each one of those libraries allows us to retrieve the value, to create a color, and to set a background uh, for it. And then finally here, the solution implementation for this iteration. This is the second iteration, so we're going to need to create the Xcode project. You may have created it the first iteration, like I was debating which one to do. So create the Xcode project, uh, add UI slider component, add UI view component. These are the view components. Connect the slider action to the controller this is the win remember there is in the controller there's a uh, there's a what which I described here and although I talked about win before I forgot to talk about win here but the win is when the user makes a selection so the win when the user make a selection meaning that when the user makes a selection the app needs to be modified in order to execute these steps and that's what we have connect to the slider and we will need to connect the uh, slider as outlet in order to retrieve the value and we need to connect to the view 
as an outlet you may not say well this is too much I really don't know okay don't write it if you don't if you don't know don't write it just you know that you're gonna need to add a slider you're gonna need to add a UI view you can start with that and let this drive the rest um, I, I may because I already know what I know what we need to do uh, because of I've done things like that before so I'm writing it down you may not be at the same so you say well I'm just gonna add slider add view and then take it from there uh, step by step that 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 should be fine uh, as well so let's start and create the Xcode project at the UI slider uh, but we'll do that in the next video